Young Turks, everybody. Welcome, Ben Mankiewicz, Michael Schur. Michael, what's going on? How are you, Ben? Uh, a lot of politics today. Yeah, you know, uh, the Republicans are having a series of debates to it will help to determine their nominee for president. And when do those start? Uh, they, I think they start, we're getting close to the, you know, yeah, it's almost November. Hampshire. Right, so <laughs> got to get cracking. Uh, but uh, I think a lot of evidence today, we have a couple of things to indicate that uh, Barack Obama also uh, uh, campaigning aggressively. Yeah, he's begun to run for president. Yeah, he sounds different. Yeah. He's uh, very close to where we are right this second, Barack Obama. That's right, here in uh, Los Angeles, uh, but uh, thankfully not coming at rush hour. Although it will still be paralyzingly difficult to get anywhere in this city. Yeah. Uh, it was brutal last time it was here. People just canceled plans. People, yeah. people all over, they just turned, wherever they were going, people just turned around. Just turned around, or, so I can't or do Or worse, it. they couldn't turn around. They just went wherever. Like, yeah, let's go to Denny's. Right. And yeah. when something happens in Los Angeles, you have to understand, it, it, Los Angeles is so full of people that think the world begins and ends in Los Angeles that they have no appreciation whatsoever for what goes on. I mean, and this is, you know, they, they don't think, you know, what, would they, what do they do in Washington? You know, great, it's how inconvenient they great are Great story here. to that. Uh, I went to get my coffee uh, this morning at uh, Starbucks in Santa Monica, and I'm uh, getting coffee, and the guy next to me, this is actually before, before I came here, so this is at around noon, and uh, the guy comes in, got his coffee before me, and he's, the woman's cleaning up the counter, and he goes, she's like, oh, how's your day? He's a regular, I guess. She's like, how's your day going to go? He's ah, oh, busy, busy, and I got to get there early because, uh, that uh, Obama guy is here. <laughs> right, that, exactly. That Obama so, guy. Los Angeles thinks yeah. it is uh, it's, yeah. its own place. And, yeah, but it and, wasn't like that Obama guy critically. It was like that uh, Obama guy. Right, right. Like, yeah, like, what, what, right who's right. that fellow? If he's not the head of Fox or you know <laughs> right. Universal, then nobody knows who he is. Yeah. Uh, in any case, uh, it's, uh, it's still fun to have the president here. And it does make you think, you know, what do they do in Washington when the president moves around? Then you go there and it's stealth. It, he just moves. He was in Washington. He spoke to the Congressional Black Caucus. Uh, and he, he, it sounded like uh, it was uh, 1966. It did sound like it was 1966. It, um, you know, it turns out we have a black president. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I didn't know that until, uh, until uh, I heard the speech. No, uh, I think it, members it, of the it, Congressional uh, Black Caucus didn't know it either. Uh, well, yeah. Apparently they didn't think so. I, I, I think they're a little misguided some of the time. Um, and, but, but I do think the president was, you know, he was forceful. It did, it did sound like what Ben is saying. It sounded like a mass meeting and, and the president was there at a mass meeting during the civil rights movement, sort of rousing the rabble. This is sounded that you're gonna hear from Barack Obama here in a matter that you haven't heard him sound at all. I mean, it's back to that thing, and you realize why you were so excited in, back in, in 2008. Because yeah. uh, he's capable of sounding great. And then, of course, he's going to get criticized uh, by Maxine Waters. But first, uh, let's listen to uh, Barack Obama uh, at the Congressional uh, Black Caucus, because uh, uh, as, as, as he channels uh, Martin Luther King, sometimes he gets tired, but he's going to press on. So I don't know about you, CBC, but the future rewards those who press on. With patient and firm determination, I'm going to press on for jobs. I'm going to press on for equality. I'm going to press on for the sake of our children. I'm going to press on for the sake of all those families who are struggling right now. I don't have time to feel sorry for myself. I don't have time to complain. I'm going to press on. I expect all of you to march with me and press on. That's good stuff. That was <laughs> um, <Ooh. Yeah>. the, <laughs> that was a good speech. I mean, that was uh, that was a very exciting uh, presidential moment. Uh, to, to hear the president speak with passion, which we don't hear very often, is always great. And it's only speaking to that audience. But yeah. it, you know, and he's over, about to and he's about to tell that audience to shut up. Right. I was going to say. I was going <laughs> to say. But he does it with passion. No, I was just going to say. He's about to tell them stuff that they just don't want to hear, and that's funny too. All right. Here's uh, here's part two of uh, Obama at the CBC. Take off your bedroom slippers. Put on your marching shoes. Shake it off. Stop complaining. Stop grumbling. Stop crying. We are going to press on. We've got work to do. CBC, God bless you. And God bless the United States of America. <laughs> Boom. That was great. Yeah. That was great. Um, yeah, you know, I, I think I think the president is is actually frustrated. I think he's frustrated the people. There's a little bit about this president that makes you think that he does things with a wink and a nod. That you know, he said, "Listen, I know what you all want. 
I'm going to get to it. It's going to happen. Uh, but but for the moment, it's not going to happen. And and I, I just feel like when he speaks to his built-in constituencies, he has a bad time communicating that. Uh, I think he does it with well, gays. I think he, has a bad I, time. he did it with DADT with the gays, uh, and 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 the the everyone who was pushing the, that legislation. I think he's had a hard time with the with the CBC here because of that. I think people are impatient with, with good reason. But I, I also think the president feels like the, he has them in their back, back pocket, and he doesn't. He cannot take people Yeah, but I mean, granted. don't you think that he, I mean, I think that people are impatient because he's failed and in, the, well, in, I in mean, the capacity to deliver on those things. I mean, I... I, I, okay, I I don't know th- I don't know that though I mean yes at that route but I think that's what I'm talking about here I think the president feels like I'm not going to fail we're not going to fail it's just going to take a little bit of time I think that's how he felt with the, with with the gay voters during DADT he said that I mean he said it's going to take a little time we're going to get this done it's going to happen but it's not my priority number one right now and I feel like jobs are a priority it hasn't been communicated to me that way but when you hear that that in the black community there is 16 over 16 percent unemployment which is very different than 50, what... Fifty percent in some cities. In some cities, but overall, yeah. I'm talking nationally. Uh, I, you know, th- then it, it gets to a point where they're boiling over, and they're boiling over now. Fifty yeah, percent would be for, for uh, young blacks. Um, yeah, but they're, what, what he doesn't seem to understand is that he's responsible for that discontent. Like, he, he, the disconnect for me is that he, Barack Obama not realizing the role he played in making everybody so mad, and that he seems frustrated because he's like, no, no, it's going to take time. Don't you understand? Right. And they say, but when? After your presidency? 2017? Yeah. Is that when we start? Yeah, but it, it also goes deeper to that. It, it, it goes deeper to, to black Americans and, and black elected officials thinking, we have our first black president. He needs to make black, the black agenda a bigger agenda than he has made it. And, 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 and his, you know, what I find the president does is that he is too afraid to do that, to seem like the black president, to seem as if he is trying all the time to only cater to blacks. And by doing it not at all, he really stabs himself in the foot. And that's what he's done here. Um, he then... Uh drew the wrath in this uh, to some extent, although, I, again, I'm not sure. That we're going to hear from Maxine Waters, and, I, uh, and I, a congressman out here for in, in California, a member of the Congressional Black Caucus, and I'm not sure she, I'm not sure she, I, I'm not sure they were really disagreeing. Like, I don't quite know yeah. from where her criticism was because she says that we're with it. But anyway, she took exception, or at least uh, was uh, expressed some surprise that he had said that uh, um, to stop complaining. Uh, So here is uh, Maxine Waters reacting afterwards. This is today, right? This is this morning on a CBS morning show. Is that right, JR? So CBS morning show uh, reacting to the president's speech. Well, I'm not sure um, exactly who the president was talking to. As you know, the Congressional Black Caucus has been out in five cities where we held town hall meetings and jobs fairs addressing this 16.7 unemployment that's real, that translates in some areas to 30, 40 percent unemployment, and with black youth, 50 percent unemployment. So I'm not sure who the president was addressing. Yeah. Well, I mean... The president got caught up in his words, too. I mean, he got caught up in the moment and and went, you know, I think, passionately far in this speech. Uh, it's true. Which way? He hasn't in done, the criticism? No, in the, well, in the criticism and also in the rhetoric. I, I just I, I sort of think that, you know, Maxine Waters is taking apart word by word what the president said, and which she is, has the right to do. Uh, the president, I think, in, and I'm not defending him, because it, he put himself in this position, as you said, and I agree totally. But the president is also speaking to the caucus and saying, we're going to get to this stuff. You know that I care about this stuff. We need votes now. I'm running for president again, and I need you. And so it's not about the minutia, I don't think. And she's reading that it's about the minutia. It's not about the fact that they're not trying to create jobs in the CBC and that they are doing those town halls and you have Tavis Smiley and and, and I don't know who the oh, Dwayne Wickham I'm not, it's not Dwayne Wickham but somebody else is out there uh, doing these town halls as well uh, for black Americans and for jobs for black Americans so it, it keeps going um, and so Maxine Waters is also in addressing she didn't in this clip and we might hear it later about the complaining you know the idea that stop complaining well black Americans 
will stop complaining when there's something to stop complaining about, you know, and there yeah. always is something and to complain about. And here he's addressing the CBC, but the complaints could, I mean, he could have been talking to gays, he could have been talking to Latinos, frustrated with his stance on immigration reform, he could have been, and his failure to press the DREAM Act, he could have been talking to yeah. progressives upset about the economy and failure to take on Wall Street. In this case, it happened to be blacks, but I, I think everybody essentially stands in the same place as expressing frustration, and I, I, don't, I, I don't think saying, I'll get to it is effective. I, what's interesting, forget regarding the tone, him getting caught up. I think he was. It sounded to me like there was that line about stop complaining was supposed to be a big line. Yeah. That they had talked about it, and he was going to have a little sister soldier moment where he goes before the Congressional Black Caucus and says and gives an impassioned speech, but at the same time knows we'll get some headlines by saying, "Now back off." Right. Right. But he got so caught up in the other rhetoric that that line was hard. It sort of faded. It, and it was hard to deliver. It was hard to deliver in that moment when you're all caught up in this fervor, and yeah. then he's like, I can't stop complaining. But the crowds are like, Whoa, yeah, we're, yeah, we're yeah. complaining, we're cheering. Right. Yeah. And it, it felt as if he was, uh, yeah, no, you're exactly right. It felt also as if he, he had established a tone there that was very different than the stop complaining tone. So he had to go along with the tone that he'd already established. Right. And that made it a little, uh, made it a little difficult. As you mentioned, here's Maxine Waters uh, criticizing the president on criticizing, uh, on criticizing the caucus uh, as she defends, uh, and, and, and she defends them and suggest that he would never have said these things about other ethnic groups. I found that language a bit curious because uh, the president spoke uh, to the Hispanic caucus uh, and certainly they're pushing him on immigration. Uh, and despite the fact that he's appointed a Sotomayor to the Supreme Court, he has an office for excellence in Hispanic education mm -hmm. right in the White House. They're still pushing him. So he certainly didn't tell them to stop complaining. And he would never say that to the gay and lesbian community who really pushed him on don't ask, don't tell, or even uh, in a speech to AIPAC. Uh, he would never say to the Jewish community, stop complaining about Israel. So I don't know who he was talking to because we're certainly not complaining. Okay. We're working. We support him and we're protecting that base because because we want people to be enthusiastic about him. Doesn't it help him that he delivers a speech before the Congressional Black Caucus, has a degree of criticism of them, which he fails to deliver very effectively, but nonetheless that he criticizes the Congressional Black Caucus during the speech, he's going to get Obviously, there's going to be a, a, a lot of talk from the right that he's uh, kowtowing, that he's uh, that whatever the Congressional Black Caucus wants, Barack Obama does. That'll be their line. The yeah. socialist Barack Obama does whatever the blacks want. Uh, so then he gets Maxine Waters to come out the next day and <laughs> and criticize him for the speech. Yeah. I mean, it, that's true. I mean, the administration does not see Maxine Waters, I don't think, showing up on CBS and think, oh, stop hammering us. I think it helps him. Well, I, I don't know if it helps them. I mean, I, I you know, in, in the big picture, it may help them. You know, people, let Maxine Waters, to people who know her, know that she's uh, she can be a divisive. But to a national figure, audience. To a national audience. Uh, but you know, going back to the main thrust of this, which is the idea of complaining, and and really what Waters was saying, and and he has addressed different constituencies and said patience. I go back to don't ask, don't tell. He did do that with with. Uh, he didn't say stop complaining. Uh, he may have not. He have told used them that to stop language. being gay, which I thought. Which was, I thought that was weird. It's and, so and, gay. And, complaining, and you guys, will, you know, you guys will get better. He said that, which <laughs> right. I thought was unpresidential too. Um, but no, truthfully, though, I, you know, I, I think that everybody is complaining about the president. Everyone who voted for him feels somewhat dissatisfied by him. And what he needs to do is what he's doing, and he's starting with the Congressional Black Caucus, is to go out there and tell people, I, you know, I hear you, we're, we're going we're gonna to make this work, but in order for me to actually hear you and do something about it, you have to reelect me. I mean, that's what it's, what's starting right now. Um, and, and, you know, I... Listen, I'm going to trust him on that. I'm going to trust him on that because I want him to beat any of these yahoos are running against him because I'm a Democrat, because I like him. I think that he's, uh, I just find him frustrating. And I think it, it's it's understandable that all these groups find him Can I tell you where some of maybe that frustration is coming from with Maxine Waters aside? And then that last clip when she brought up how he wouldn't say that to these three other groups. And yes, he told all of them patience. As you said, there's this tone. And historically, black folks are written off. It's like, yeah, I hear concerns, but you're just black folks anyway. And then there's not there's usually not enough of a of a fiery group behind a lot of black people's concerns in the country. And that's what generally what the Congressional Black Caucus is for. So if he's speaking to them and maybe not to just lazy folks, she's like, we're doing things. We're actually helping the community that elected us to help them because every community has a group of people that they've elected to help them in general. 
Um, so except, when you accept the juice, <laughs> yeah. we're trying to get one. Well, we're trying to. We, we're working on we it. We can't catch a freaking break. Go on. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, you can you can say things each. I'm like, okay, calm down, be patient. Or then you can say, uh, it, it basically is like get out. Get, there was the other words. These things were written. Um, get out of bed. Put on. Take off your slippers. You lazy right. black folks. <laughs> Put on some boots and well, go I mean, to work. And it, start marching, which is, you know, it, yeah. which is thematic. You know, it, it, there's a history to that. You know, it begin, yeah. be, begin the march. Um, and it just sounds, it just it has it has tones of, and that, like I said, I don't think he meant it this way. That's why it's weird because you're calculated on everything else when you're a politician. Yeah. Except when you don't know how this can possibly sound because uh, they don't really vote that much anyway. Yeah, I really think he But he them. needs them, though. He definitely needs them. He needs the, and as Maxine Waters said, he needs the enthusiasm. She also said that, she, you know, he has them. Yes, yeah, she said he asked them. It was a curious, the whole exchange was curious, but I think he really missed the tone. Like, the crowd was, he almost got too into it. He gave too good a speech. They were too into him there, and then he was yeah. like, oh, no, i got to stick in this line that Axel Rott's making me put in. Right, <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I find, you know, this, he's running for president now, and when he starts running for president, he goes right for his constituency, and he, this is a main part of his constituency. He needs to get them fired up. He needs to say, you know, I don't know that stop complaining is the right thing, because they should keep complaining. If they're not happy, they should keep complaining. But it's in a way saying, I hear you. We just got to get there. And, we, and I'm, I'm with you. And, and I don't know. I'm giving him a break here. Uh, but I'm, I give him a break too much, probably. He was in uh, San Jose over the weekend, uh, the president was, and continuing the idea that he's talking a lot more like a candidate. He had some uh, great things to say. There's, only, there's no way around it. I was really glad to see him do this. He took on all those uh, audience members at the debates who'd been complaining so aggressive, who'd been booing at yeah. these horrible moments that we talked about so much. The, ah, 235 deaths, yeah, kill him. The generic uh, unknown guy who would, 30 years old, be left to die because he didn't have any health insurance. And then finally, the gay soldier in Iraq. So here's what Barack Obama had to say in, in San Jose about this. And this, this sounds like the, uh, the kind of guy y you vote for for president. He said, uh, some of you folks uh, may actually be folks who actually used to be Republicans in the crowd, but are puzzled by what's happened to that party. Has anybody been watching the debates lately, Obama said. You've got a governor, meaning Perry, whose state is on fire denying climate change. You've got audiences cheering at the prospect of somebody dying because they don't have health care and booing a service member in Iraq because they're gay. That's not reflective of who we are. That's good stuff. And the choice to do it is a very conscious choice yeah. to take on the, the notion that you and I and so many others were sort of sickened by the audience responses now three different times at those Republican right. debates. You know, and I think giving life to this as the president and as the candidate is important. I mean, these things we talk about them, the news talks about them, uh, the, the, the world, whoever's watching these debates, and I'm, I'm guessing it's not a tremendous percentage of Americans who sit and watch these Republican debates, but when you have the, the story proliferated and continued uh, by the president as a candidate, by the man running for president, it's really important. Yeah, that's these, a, the, these people have to be reminded. And that's a non, uh, that's a thing that the Democrats have not done effectively. Like, no. they were like, oh, that story happened, let's move on. No, man, yeah. they got more debates coming, let's keep reminding them of the time that they booed the gay service member, that they thought it was okay to let the guy die, and they thought, woo, executions, and then five days later, we killed a guy who might yeah. very well have been innocent. And, and he has done this, in, fa in fairness, recently a few times. I mean, off the top of my head, I can think of, with this, uh, with the jobs bill, he keeps saying, pass the bill, pass the bill, pass the bill, trying to put a mantra into our heads. He also talked in one speech about, uh, he gave a sp when he gave a speech, his, uh, his deficit speech, he talked about uh, the taxation of, of uh, corporate jet owners. I thought it was a great line to stick into that speech. And I thought, oh, it's just going to die on the vine. But he did keep using it over and over and over again. So it became part of the parlance that the Republicans then had to address and, and protect. So if, if this is a, a, a tactical thing that the, the White House is doing, you know, God bless him, it's, it's good. Then a very clear uh, choice made by the president as he continued in that vein uh, to point out that, hey man, like we made this, we had the sea change moment in 2008, everybody knows it was, but don't, uh, 2008 was crucial, don't think that 2012 isn't also. Uh, this is a theme I guess we're gonna see, but he followed up that point by saying, quote, this is a choice, Obama said, about the fundamental direction of our country. 2008 was an important election, he said. Uh, and uh, 2008 was an important direction. 2012 is an even more important election. So I'm yeah. guessing that that's going to be a theme hit, too. Like, yeah, look, man, you did it once. You got to come right. here and you got to do it again. All right, we come back. We're going to talk about uh, I, this disturbing story in the L.A. Times from a political point of view to show us just how difficult it's going to be for Barack Obama about uh, Indiana. And uh, uh, Rick Scott, sportscaster Rick Scott, the governor of Florida, <laughs> brings you the dramatic results of the Florida straw poll. We'll have that when we come back.
I think of a Democrat, uh, Anna, or a, if George Soros had been involved in hacking, uh -huh. would any w would he be permitted to enter into discussions to be involved in reshaping the future of education in America? Absolutely not. In <laughs> I mean, fact, it just occurred to me, like, why, why, why does Rupert Murdoch get to be involved in the story that Anna's about to bring you? It's, in a sense, it's it's not an, it, it, it's ludicrous. It I'm, is, I don't think it's ludicrous. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, I'll finally uh, disagree with you guys today. So, oh, interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, me, I, you know, not about Rupert Murdoch in general, but go ahead. All right. Let me give you guys details into the story. So Rupert Murdoch just recently bought uh, something known as wireless generation for 360 million dollars. And what wireless generation essentially does is it tracks the progress of students. So it's a huge database that compiles information about the academic success success of students, right? And um, basically, school districts are encouraged to use this software in order to know whether or not a student is excelling or needs help. So th the software itself makes sense. But Roger, uh, not Roger Ailes, uh, Rupert Murdoch ends up buying it. So why does he want to do that? Well, it turns out that he wants to, you know, invest in this business. He sees public education as a gold mine. Okay, he is quoted as saying that, and um, he wants to use this software, sell it to public school districts, and make money off of it. Except it's a little problematic when the guy who is the head of an organization that. I don't know, hacks into people's emails, email accounts. It's a little problematic to have that guy have so much access to personal information of public school students. Yeah, I just mean, like, in the, in our, our sense of outrage about this story is so minimal. And I mean, he's right, and which the part about Rupert Murdoch getting involved in in and in recognizing that, the, as he says, that the schools remain the last holdout from the digital revolution, that he thinks it's a gold mine and there's money to be made there. I'm sure he's right, and I'm sure he's forward yeah. thinking, and correct, and thoughtful, and there's probably a great deal of help that person X could provide to American schools by enhancing the bring, bringing them into the digital age. But I mean, it, again, if there were if any, if Al Gore were involved in this process, there would be this cacophony of shouts well, from the true. right that's about how ridiculous yeah. it is. That, that's 100 percent true. But what I was saying about Rupert Murdoch, and and I mean, you know how I dislike Rupert Murdoch, and I right. think America is a much worse country he because it. he came along, uh, and I, you know, he's a megalomaniac. But at the bottom line is. At a certain point, something different has to be tried in American public schools. And whether it's Rupert Murdoch finally making amends, finally, you know, whether he's going to make a lot of money, but he's going to help the schools. The guy's a good businessman. Everything he has done, whether, you know, whether it's uh, starting newspapers or start, has had some level of success. He's, he's been played a dirty game on the way there. And you don't want somebody like that necessarily involved in your schools. But and, and so I, I'm, I'm very uncomfortable. I'm not defending him. I'm saying, though, that you need somebody like this, somebody who's forward thinking, like Ben just said, who, who could look at, at what's going on in, in our public schools and say, it's a disaster and they need to catch up not just to the world but they need to be up to par with what they used to be in this country right the, the danger with it being Murdoch and mm -hmm. I, 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 is that and we're I'm gonna get way ahead of ourselves here because all we're talking about is this company of course it's right just now. a little company and right it's not, yeah. but if Rupert Murdoch became the kind of guy who made millions and helped move schools forward and there could be a possible litany of great things that could happen to public schools in this country that all involve at some point by the way a great deal more money um, uh, the idea that then that guy might be in a position to sort of the, I'm already thinking like, every student in the morning will get a little morning news briefing. Well, of course. That will be provided is. by News Corporation. And then you're like, oh my God, what the f have we done? Yeah. Right. Yeah. There, I think that there are other potential issues. Hi, with kids. This. I'm Megan Kelly. Here's what you need to know. Today. Disaster. No, there are obviously other issues involved in this because you have Rupert Murdoch who has access to all of this personal information for students, right? And you got to keep in mind the most important aspect of the story is that Rupert Murdoch is not in favor of public education. He's in favor of privatizing education, right? So what could he do with this information? He could take it and he can have his reporters skew it in any way that he sees fit. Okay, so all of a sudden you have. Fox News interpreting this information in this data and saying, oh, public school systems don't work. Look, we have this information from wireless generation that was compiled by Rupert Murdoch, and it indicates that public school doesn't work. Yeah. And then it will be another tool for the GOP uh, when it comes to privatizing education. So th there are definitely some and, issues and with this. indoctrinating, as Ben said, indoctrinating right. young kids into believing what what, what, what Rupert Murdoch's. Well, you know, forever, in, in the, or not forever, in the past 20 years, whether it be Chris Whittle with his Edison schools and, and other 
other people with tra charter schools in New York, whether it's ministers and others, the, the, the people have thought outside the box as to how to privatize parts of, of um, private education, public education in this country. I, it's clear that Rupert Murdoch shouldn't be the one doing that, but it, it's clear that something has to be done to change the way the public schools work in this country. I don't want a giant multinational corporation sort of in charge of in, no, in, in, I, nor, any capacity nor do I, having but that I, but big I, ahead I, in education. I, I totally agree with you. I just think that it, it you know, when, when you hear somebody who is good at business, I think that it, if, if there would be a potential for the betterment of the schools, at least listen to his ideas and then have somebody else implement them if they work. Yeah, sure. I, I don't, you, know. yeah, you can go along and steal his ideas. I never heard him say anything about privatizing schools, but you know what? I, I was going to ask you whether he'd actually specifically said but it doesn't matter. Of course he's in favor of it, and even if he says he's not, he is. Right, of right. course, yeah, right. totally. Are you opposed to it? Uh, him? Yeah. No, no, to, to the privatization of public schools. I mean, I'm opposed to, on that, explain that simply, yeah, I'm opposed to the privatization yeah. of public schools. Absolutely. Uh, are we, uh, but it depends on what you mean. I mean, are we going to abandon public education? Are people going to be, does the privatization of public schools mean people, everybody still gets to go to school for free? I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, of course, it, that's well, that then, would be implicit. Yeah. yeah I mean, well, then, yeah. Be, I mean, I, they just would they just wouldn't be say they wouldn't be run by municipalities. They'd be run by, by whatever company it was that was running the schools. Yeah, I'm not in favor of that. I'm in favor of a bunch of other ideas um, and different ways of, of 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 thinking. And and you know, I mean, I, I don't want a company to just come in and teach the kids. Right. I don't. It didn't work with the companies that, or I guess it did to some extent. They've taken over the even the busing. You know, I don't want I don't want people who are in it to make money uh, uh, in charge of this uh, solely. Solely, but I mean, the presumption would be if they did it, that they would be involved with educators as well. It wouldn't just be, I mean, they would be making money, but it wouldn't just be, uh, it, it wouldn't be fully altruistic or fully capitalistic. Either. I don't want their motivation at one year to be like, we turned, uh, we our profits were 6% last, last year, let's get it to 8. I don't want that conversation. Well, what about to we graduated 94% of the class and we also made, you know, yeah, you get a certain amount every year and you run it. I don't want, on the, the, dollar, I don't you know, want I mean, there to be an incentive to sharpen fewer pencils. Um, that doesn't seem like there'd be a big expense at that. I'll no, grant no. you. Yeah. <laughs> Who's All sharpening right. pencils? You can privatize architecture schools. Is that what you want to do? <laughs> All right, let's move on to Alabama. A small town in Alabama known as Bay Minette uh, is giving nonviolent offenders the choice between jail or church. So if you don't want to go to jail, you can go to church uh, once a week for a year, and uh, the case will be dropped. You, you won't have to go to court anymore. You won't have to serve any jail time. You won't even have to pay a fine. Pay all your debts in church. Please What's a, sue. What's nice about that is that he, it equates religion with punishment. Right. <laughs> so, I know. That's I know. true. Yeah. So uh, this is, in my opinion, an attempt to indoctrinate people. And the, I love that the only secular option is jail. So right. it's either you go to church or you go to jail, and that's it. So um, I think it's crazy. And, and right now there are uh, law professors that are looking into this and trying to determine whether or not this violates the Constitution. You know, is this uh, ruining or violating the separation of church and state? I guess we'll see what they come up with. In my opinion, and I'm not an expert on this, I think that it violates yeah. the separation of church you, and state. You don't need to be an expert right. on this. If I, I, I know enough from two classes yeah. at Tufts University. Uh, go oh, Jumbos. jumbos. <laughs> um, if, if your choices are you go to jail or church, it's unconstitutional. If your choices are you go to jail or we have an alternative, you can either go to church or uh, this uh, community betterment program where you go every week that's right. completely secular and you can do either one of those, and then, then you might fly. And what about the you can't Jewish say, guy? The Jewish say, guy who lives in Bay Minette, Alabama. What, what are they gonna make him go to synagogue? And what's, he moved years he, ago. Oh, he did, yeah, that's yeah. a long time. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, that's a ridiculous. Who, Somebody sue. Come on. Giddy up. There's a lawyer who wants to take you. Oh, no, the Jew moved. No, he moved. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. A Miami teen by the name of Angie Verona uh, became an unwilling Internet pinup. This was a story that was covered by Gawker, and I wanted to bring it to your attention. It turns out that when she was 14 years old, um, a group of online people, I'm assuming men, <laughs> hacked into her photo bucket account and they took all of these um, pictures of her and none of the pictures are nude but you know there are a couple pictures of her hanging out with her friends in her bikini and since she's not naked it's not considered internet porn. So there's this section of Reddit known as jailbait where people post all these pictures of young teenage girls 
in their bikinis, how right? You, and they you, get off on that. How does someone at Reddit not go, hey man, look, I'm quitting unless you do away with the jailbait session. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I That's feel true. I feel horrible for this girl because it, it, her photo bucket account got hacked. It's not like she's going around spreading her pictures all over the place. These pictures also ended up on pornography sites. So people that she knows personally started criticizing her for being in porn, which she isn't, right? So we actually have a video where she's talking about the situation. Let's watch that and we'll talk about it a little bit. I've been getting harassed for two years now because of some pictures that leaked onto the internet. And I had a bunch of like pictures that I sent my boyfriend and I had them saved in the photo book instead of my phone. Someone hacked me. And I guess those stupid mistakes that I was 14 at the time, so I didn't really know. You go to Google and you just type in my name and websites started coming on and it got out of hand so I just gave up. We called the cops. They couldn't do anything about it because it wasn't nudity. So it wasn't like child porn. People would tell me things in school like, oh, you're a porn star. This is not I'm like, I'm not a porn star because it wasn't naked. I believe one time she was at school and some guys were looking at her and it turns out they were looking at porn. They were looking at the porn site. She's not naked, but it's a porn site. Stole my beard. And they were looking at it at school. <laughs> it gets me depressed. Like, I've like contemplated suicide, not even kidding, like, because it hurts knowing that, like, She's adorable. I mean, in the best possible way. She's, right. You know, got, got good for her. Uh, th yeah, it's, I mean, it's horrible. I don't know. It is. It is horrible because there's nothing she can do. She says that she contacted the FBI. The FBI doesn't care about you. The FBI cares about Scarlett Johansson's nude pictures getting leaked, right? But they don't care about a 14-year-old. Well, She's I, I 17 think, I mean, now, by the way. I mean, the FBI cares about, uh, I mean, you're... They don't care. No, no, I've, I've, I've witnessed the FBI caring about... Uh, 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 underage porn. I mean, at the state. Underage porn, yes, but this isn't considered underage porn because she's clothed. Like you don't see her. Okay, but uh, there's a whole. I'm just saying, there's a whole division of federal law enforcement that would, I, I, my hunch is, not be dismissive of her complaint. There may be mm -hmm. nothing she could do because they stole her pictures and it's not really porn and she's in the bikini, even though it's sort of, when you put it up on the internet under a thing, jailbait it. You've sexualized this innocent girl. Yeah. Um, but you know, I mean, the, the, the you know, to stay, just to make it clear that my exposure to the FBI and. Uh, underage porn. No, the station I had worked at in Charleston uh, after I left, they, uh, they they kicked down the doors and took somebody's computer and arrested him. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hmm. I, I, I remember that story. Yeah, it was all, it was a guy I'd, I had, who came like literally the week I, I left, but uh, yeah, so I mean, they, they you know, they, they emerged out of nowhere and they were, they were on it. Just, I feel like you got to be really careful with anything you put up on the internet. Like, it's insane what kind of things make turn guys on online. Like, it doesn't matter. You can be fully clothed and you say something that's a little risque and people lose their minds. Yeah. Like, you just have to be careful. You know, even if you have a private photo bucket account and you have pictures there that are meant for your boyfriend, if they want to, they'll find a way to hack it and they'll spread those pictures all over the place. It's really scary. Look, you guys with your uh, menstruating, uh, you're crazy. But, the, uh, <laughs> uh, but men are gross. Just we're gross. It's yeah. just, it's fascinating to see what turns like, guys on. I even on. think the word photo bucket is kind of hot. <laughs> totally. Yeah. I don't even need to go on to it. I didn't think I was going to say much. Yeah. Um. <laughs> all right, all right, let's move on. Uh, Los Angeles firefighters are in a little bit of trouble after they loaned one of their fire trucks for a pornography for Brazers.com. We have a local news report on this. Um, oh, it's a good. Little, I haven't this seen is great, by the way. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm, this I'm, is a little graphic, but before we watch it, let me just note, I love how the reporters say, oh, we can't show you uh, this nudity, but here you go. And you basically <laughs> see this woman like spreading her legs and doing all sorts of risque stuff. I'm sure you guys will What's enjoy great, that. By the way, when you introduce a new story, Ben changes. And I, I here I'm up to the under the U.S. Supreme Court class action. <laughs> yeah, because... You didn't make the stories. You didn't copy them for me today. So, Sorry, Michael. So I'm, but I'm changing the channel just like both of you are, and I'm just on to a different story. <laughs> First of all, I was unsure of whether or not you were going to co-host with me today, no, but no, everything's just, okay. But I like that I'm doing it anyway. Okay. <laughs> all right, let's watch the video and we'll discuss. The backdrop for some of those acts, LA City Fire Engine number 263 from station 63 in Venice. Look at this fire truck. Isn't that nice? In this scene, the topless actress climbs up on the engine and exposes herself over and over. Look, I think we have more friends. Watching the movie being shot appears to be a group of firefighters. I'm a fireman. I know them. Like I said. 
Insiders who didn't want to appear on camera say firefighters set it all up ahead of time, arranging with the film crew to park their engine in two disabled spots at the beach so producers could use it for their movie. Zero tolerance for that. Captain Tina Harrow says an internal affairs investigation is underway. The fire chief is adamant about um, addressing the issue finding out what took place. For several minutes of the movie, the actress has free access to the truck and asks passers-by to fondle her. She's not even wearing any case. Firefighters might be hard-pressed to explain how their truck uh. was used in a porn movie. Department policy says all apparatus shall be kept in sight at all times by firefighters. And they must operate apparatus in a way that does not compromise the reputation of the department. One insider told us the battalion chiefs knew. Everyone at the station level knew all about the porn shoot. The professional standards division is following all leads, all reasonable leads, and they're leaving no stone unturned. Mm. Would have been better if she said something porny there. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have a hard time cracking this case. Right, yeah. <laughs> Back to you. <laughs> I We're always assume. Bend every stone over and <laughs> turn it. Are you guys getting excited? Oh, I already I'm, got excited. I'm, I'm, right. still, I'm still on the already, uh, Supreme Court class, class action. So. I already finished. I always assume that um, those. Porns where the girl asks like passerbys to like play with her or whatever. I always assumed that those were staged, but it looks like they're not staged. I don't think anything's staged. <laughs> but anyway, um, do you guys think that the fire department should face consequences for this? I, I, <laughs> um, no, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll say no. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I think the consequence should be a very, very, very stern. Jesus Christ, Larry, you can't do this. You know that. Yeah. Never do it again. Right. Now go save people's lives. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, they, they, whatever. I don't care. Like, yeah, they, I, I mean, I like it. The, the department policy. You don't need to break out the handbook. You use sure. the fire engine to shoot a porn movie. I'm it's sure it violates not part some of the, uh, tenet of the handbook. Right. Yeah. It's violated department. Just, I don't care. Let it go. But, yeah. uh, but, but that said. But Ben's right. There's enough that you just <laughs> reprimand people and say you shouldn't do that. That was dumb. Yeah. And then move yeah, on. You've, you've, look, right. you made me handle it. I spent, I uh, wasted two days on this. Right. Really. I, I don't know. I'm very angry at you. You, you know what? Maybe like they don't get access to water at a random fire, and you don't tell them about it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Just for like ten minutes, like no water, right. no water. Yeah. Oh, why did we do that? So you're saying their hoses would go limp? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Sorry. Anna, back to you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I agree with you guys. I mean, I, I don't think anyone should get fired. You know. <laughs> I don't think it was it was a lapse of judgment, but it, it happened. So it, it no one got hurt in the process. I don't see anything wrong with it. A fire truck was in a brazier's porn. It wasn't it's, even that much of a lapse of judgment. It was just a dumb thing. Right. Yeah. It was, it was dumb. They're firefighters. They're, they, firefighters. they're guys. Right. Except for Tina Harrow, your captain. Yeah, zero yeah. dollars. That was bad luck. <laughs> she seems like she's going to fire someone. Yeah. Like I don't, she's ready to do it. I think that you could reassign. I mean, I don't know. My hunch is it's pretty hard to fire a firefighter. It's a tongue twister. Yeah, but I, I think it, it actually is pretty difficult to, you know, it's not you can't it's not easy. And by the way, we have trained firefighters. Don't, don't fire one. Mm -hmm. Don't fire one. They're firemen. Like if they're good okay. firemen. And also, if this was happening all over the yeah. the department, then you have a review and do something. It's an isolated incident. Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, we have a Bristol Palin story. By uh, the way, that movie looks like it sucks. I mean, in all sincerity, that which? looked like a particularly bad porn. It looked like a terrible. It looked like one of the worst porns ever. Yeah. What do you think it was called? Oh, uh, that's interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Truck me. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Where there's smoke. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> uh. All right. Uh, Bristol Palin was at Saddle Ranch in West Hollywood. She was riding a bull, and then she was attacked by someone at the bar, and then she engaged in an altercation. We have video of this, so let's watch. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, that looks awesome. Wow. Oh, Jesus. That's like the most sexual thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah. It's better than the porn. Okay. Yeah. All right. So then she goes down. Oh, what? Whoa. <laughs> 
Wow. So somebody just called her mother a whore. Oh, someone said, did you ride with Levi like that? Your mother's a whore. Oh. And there was our own producer in his Bristol, what was that about? Oh, she's the fucking devil, dude. Yeah, she's the devil. She lives. She breathes. If there was a hell, which I don't believe there is one, she will be there. She's evil. She's evil. She is. Pretty much. And why'd you say I'm a homosexual? What? That's not my boyfriend. No, that's not. That's not why you're human. It's evil. She is. She's created poison in this entire world. Your mother ran out. Ran a city into the fucking grave. Crystal, what will happen? Wow. That ended poorly. Yeah, that's... I mean, as much as I don't like Sarah Palin, Bristol Palin has nothing to do with it. It's her mom, and... Although, she's, you know, made that part of her whole, is she's created her own sort of celebrity. Well, it doesn't matter, you don't say... No, 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 I don't, no, 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 let me... But, uh, like, you can't those, excuse what that guy just did, though. None. He's the worst guy in the world. Those yeah. guys are... Yeah. Uh, but she's got to be prepared that that, that, I mean, that sort of people criticizing her mom, that's going to be part of her public life. For if sure. She decides to yeah. be. Look at me, Bristol Palin. I wrote a book. I'm in Dancing with the Stars. It's all about being the Sarah's kid. You're 100 percent right, family. but yeah. that behavior is just well, ridiculous. The behavior is abhorrent. And, and Those guys are horrible. Yeah. I hope they lose the right to vote. Uh, I Unless think Unless they're that, in a swing state. Yeah. yeah of course. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't agree with the guys. What the guys did. That was ridiculous, and it was so classless. And it makes. I think it makes liberals look really, really bad when you start name calling like that. So That's as much as you hate. Sarah Palin, I dislike Sarah Palin, right? I wouldn't call her mother. I wouldn't look at Bristol and be like, your mother's a whore. That's such a classless right. thing to do. I also don't think now, she's evil. I think she's dumb. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, think she's, she's evil either. either. Yeah. By the way, my favorite exchange was when um, she's like, what did my mom do? And, she's, and he's like, she lives, yeah, she, she breathes. breathes. Yeah. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. But, but I will say this, Bristol Palin, look, she's a public figure. She needs to be a little more careful with where she is and what she's doing. Like that bull riding thing. Well, so I, what, though? I mean, that's what they do at that bar. I don't know. I, everybody's so sensitive I wouldn't stuff. do the bull riding thing. I don't have a problem with her doing it. I'm just saying, like, if you don't want to put yourself in a position like that, don't put yourself in a position like that. But You're in a bar, everyone's in a position drinking. Like that. She's, she's in a bar that has a mechanical bull. She right. rides a mechanical don't bull. Don't ride the mechanical Someone bull. Someone says, your mother is a, you know, a fucking whore or whatever you the mother said. You shouldn't respond to it. Well, do you it's guys hard not to respond think there's any that. chance that the whole thing was staged? No, yeah, of no. course there's a chance for that. So. I, I, I don't think so. I, 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 I don't think know. there's it a chance, It seems so convenient that the cameras are rolling and she becomes a sympathetic victim of this crazed homosexual attacking her for her mother's beliefs. No, she didn't well, look good so. enough. It wouldn't, no. it, it, it would have been, it was the too, quali it was the film too, quality was bad. quality too. was bad. The guys aren't that good in actors. They, they right. would be, that would be, yeah, it would have been, it would have been more carefully uh, done. I, I think there's a possibility. Here's a few things that I found a little also, sketchy. What's the upside to her for that? I mean, I there are upsides. I'll tell you why. She has a reality show coming out soon. This is a great way to well, like get into the you know limelight a little bit before that reality show comes out. That exchange went on for a little too long. How come there were no security guards? Usually, especially at Saddle Ranch, as soon as their voice is raised, all of a sudden you see security guards pull people out. Do you ride the bull? Is that why you know that? I oh, I ride the bull every <laughs> night. Like that's what I do. <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> Is that how you used to ride Levi? Um, <laughs> by the way, can we clip out, I ride the bull every night? No, <laughs> please, please don't. Please, I, don't I don't know how that slipped there. out. I, I love how I was giving Bristol night. Palin shit for riding the bull, and then I just but, said. By the way, you've answered the question. I mean, was it staged? Yes. I didn't even realize. I forgot that you'd said that at the beginning. I mean, it was staged in the sense that the whole thing is staged. Because it's for a reality show. A reality show was like, hey, let's go to the Saddle Ranch, you'll ride the but thing. But I don't think those you'll guys fall. were plants. No, they, don't, I mean. they yeah. don't need it. Yeah. Like, there's a bunch of drunk guys there. Yeah. It, it, one thing, one good thing, something would have happened that they thought would have been interesting enough. Mm -hmm. As it turned out, they got something that they can actually promote. But you put uh, a divisive figure like Bristol Palin in enough situations like that, with a camera around, and that's why the cameras were there. But that's what I'm saying. She's and, not and even that's, that divisive. She's and the security doesn't show up because the, the cameras are there. Of a There's a, there are person. television producers there, and they're running the show once the television producers are there. So right. I, I, I don't think you needed to stage it. it uh, but the whole. But that said, it's all fake. Yeah, it, yeah. it even is. Even the it bowl, is. by the way, it wasn't a real. Uh, <laughs> really? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, but I, you know, I don't know a lot about bulls, but I know they vibrate like well, crazy. Anna rides one every night. Yeah. <laughs>
by the way, so did, wrong, like, so wrong. I mean, the, okay, look, uh -huh. uh, what's up with the bowl and the girls getting on the bowl? I mean, no, I know this happens all the time at Saddle Ranch. There's one in at City Walk, and there's one in West Hollywood. I think on Sunset Boulevard, that's, right, and, that's where she was. And yeah. I think, look, here's what I think about the bowl, the mechanical bowl. It's always like intoxicated women who are dying for a little attention, right? So they get on the bull and they know it's sexual and they're <laughs> like But don't you think they, you know. It's not like the Sibian. It seems like the Sibian. It's a little like the Sibian. Yeah. I don't even know what that is. What is that? The Sibian. <laughs> uh, how do you describe the Sibian? The Sibian's a machine that you would sit on. Uh huh. It would make you never want to ride another bull, I bet, because <laughs> it, you sit on it and it it it, it gyrates. It's a gyrate, Have you so sat on a Sibian? No, no, no. Before? But I've I've listened to people on Sibians. We've and all heard, seen people heard many people sit on the Sibian, and yeah. that seemed. Sibianic. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. We'll look up the Sibian later. Yeah. Look up. <laughs> yeah. Look up the. Look up. Maybe the, you know we could probably get the Sibian guy to come in here, to promote the Sibian. Uh, yeah, Dave. I don't want to have. What's his last name? Dave. Dave. Yeah, Dave. Uh, Dave Le. Is it inappropriate Dave to Gilbert watch the, video of it now or? I don't know. Is there a video of the Sibian? No, it's not inappropriate. Is okay, there, let's watch the Sibian then. Sibian. S Y B I A N. <laughs> oh, he's just like I know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Lambert. Dave Lambert. Dave yeah. Lambert. He, he, he created yeah. the Sibian. It helps you get the poison out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you have poison in you, <laughs> yeah. we'll, you'll get it out. No, no, we no, can't, we we can't, can't? show it. We can't. All right, let's not talk about the Sibian. Well, there have been shot. They, they found one. Is she naked? Is that the problem? Oh. Uh, because they're, 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 they're clothed. They're, there are plenty of people who, who've ridden the Sibian clothed. Clothed. Yeah. Jank uh, <laughs> rolled the mechanical bull um, during a, a guy's trip. But I don't know if you ever rode the Sibian. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't have been a guy's trip. Yeah. Um, yeah All right. I, well, if you ride the bull, you'd probably enjoy riding the Sibian. All right, okay. Uh, one final story for you guys. Kim Delaney was delivering oh. a speech uh, at the National Constitution Center in Philadelphia, and she was honoring uh, former Defense Secretary Robert Gates, and people are saying that she was incoherent, intoxicated during the speech. Let's That's because watch. because she was incoherent. And and I don't know about the second part, but she was definitely incoherent. Let's watch. House through changes in administration to changes in station as he made difficult decisions um, of a senior officer. I've seen soldiers come home with painful, life-altering injuries born of their time in service. I've attended numerous military funerals, including that of my best friend's son. And my heart has been broken on numerous occasions. Um, as I try to comfort wives, husbands, families, fathers, children, loved ones made good on our wives. Oh my God! And I... We do our best to tell their stories. And though I didn't even know she was running for president. <laughs> the characters are necessarily normal. We were conducting a sniper mission. Oh, oh no, wait, that's the end. Oh, disaster. Disaster. That last part, I would be more. What, what did the guy say? I can't hear what the guy is saying, but he, she got escorted off by one of the producers because she The gave, producer like shushed her and said, come here, like a child. Like, mm, Kim, Kim. I'd be mortified. Well, the teleprompter apparently went off, right? And then she improvised well, apparently, an, an entirely I, 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 fictional. I, 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 we read it, you, what you read and what seemed to happen there seems different to me because they, yeah. uh, initially, I guess they had told her to improvise it because the prompter was down, but the prompter was clearly working. She was reading, that was definitely someone reading a prompter without right. knowing at all what she was reading on the prompter. She talked about how she'd, uh, um, uh, she'd attended many military funerals, mm -hmm. um, including her best friend's son, but I guess none of that is true? Is that what Well, it here's what it says. It reported, CBS's Philadelphia affiliate um, reported that Delaney was supposed to read her speech off of a teleprompter, but technical difficulties forced her to wing it. Yeah, Representatives from the National Constitution Center did not immediately respond to ABC News. 
Uh, and then this is, uh, then she said she hasn't done any of those things. Yeah, she Quote, done it's all make-believe. I do that as a job. It's make-believe, she said nearly two minutes into her speech. I have the luxury to do all of this on a television show. I don't know what that means. Oh, yeah, no one knows what that means. But that, yeah. she was de that was definitely someone reading a prompter and not knowing what the next word was going to be. <laughs> you know, that was, yeah. it was, uh, that was horrible. Uh, I am totally still attracted to Kim Delaney. I, I didn't even know who she was until no. today. Um, she, she seems attractive. Um, so from today's show, Kim Delaney, Bristol Palin, fire truck girl, 14-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> Kim Delaney. All right, I, that's you, it. You'd take the porn star. The, the fire trucker? No, I take Bristol Palin. Yeah, let's not kid ourselves. Yeah. I take the porn star. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's all we have for you guys. So uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Are you going to be here tomorrow? Michael? I may, in fact, be here tomorrow. All right, so Ben, Michael, same show as you saw today. Different topics, though. <laughs> <laughs>